Okay, so now that we've done hypothesis testing, I've got to make a confession that I have lied just a little bit on our error. So, so far I've really talked about how alpha is our error when we say that uh, this is the probability that we're going to be, or make like reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. And I've kind of couched that right now so far as that's the only type of error but it's not. We need to expand into another type of possible error that we can have. So let me put up a little bit of a grid for you. All right, so consider the following. We have these possible outcomes whenever we do our hypothesis testing. So when we do our hypothesis testing, we can either reject reject the null, or we'll, I'll just put in the null hypothesis, or we can fail to reject the null hypothesis. When we collect our data, this is what we're trying to do. We're either trying, trying to reject the null hypothesis, and so we can then support our alternative hypothesis, or we collect insufficient data and we basically conclude that hey, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. We don't have evidence to support the alternative and so we're just going to continue using the null hypothesis. Okay, so these are actions that we can do when we do our analysis. Now when we do our analysis, the null hypothesis, so H0 is true Okay, so it could be that the null hypothesis, the baseline assumption, is in fact right. And we could also have the baseline assumption or the null hypothesis is wrong. Okay, so when we've been talking about alpha, that's been saying that we would reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. This is known as a type 1 error, which is known as alpha. So we've talked about this already. Let me draw a little picture for you what this would look like. So this is our null hypothesis. Say that the mean is some value. Now let's say that that is actually true. Sometimes when we go out and we take a sample, occasionally we'd get a result this far out. And, but, you know, let's say that that would give us a p-value, we'll do p-value equals 0 0.01. Sometimes it just happens, even though that's a really weird occurrence and we say, hey, we're willing to reject the null hypothesis uh, if we can get a p-value of less than 0 0.05. Well, we would reject the null hypothesis here. But just by from random sampling, sometimes we get a result that weird and the null hypothesis is still true. So that is where we make a type 1 error, where we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. Okay, so now if the null hypothesis is actually wrong, if it's actually not what the hypothesis is, and we reject the null hypothesis, that's a good decision. We, we correctly, um, our data supported correctly that the null hypothesis is wrong and so we've rejected the null hypothesis. That's a good choice. Another one is that if the null hypothesis is true and our data fails to reject the null hypothesis, that's actually a good decision. Our data is not showing that the null hypothesis is false because it isn't false. It is in fact true. So we've got this last square down here, and this is where we have one other type of error that we can talk about. And this is a type two error. And it's affectionately known as beta. So this is the error when we fail to reject the null hypothesis, when the null hypothesis is in fact wrong. So those are the, the two different types of errors. So these are two wrong, like they, they are incorrect conclusions that we came, that, that we arrove at from our analysis, from our hypothesis testing. 
these two are good, correct decisions that we arrived at from our hypothesis testing. Now when we do our hypothesis testing, we want to minimize the amount of error that we do. We want to minimize the type one error, or we want to minimize the times that we're going to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. That one's pretty easy to minimize. If we really want to minimize it a lot, we just lower our alpha level, or what percent of the time we're willing to make that wrong decision. Now type 2 error is a little bit more complicated. Uh, I'm going to take another video to like show you visually what the type 2 error is. Um, but in order for us to like actually improve this type 2 error or the beta, we really are left with for, for like the, the context of this class is just increasing the sample size. We need to have a bigger sample size. And I'll show you that uh, when we talk a little bit more about our type 2 errors.